Well, hey guys, uh, Thorzax here. We're out in the shop right now. Um, one of the things that uh, one of the commenters went and brought up was how often do I use the hole conditioner? Okay. Now the hole conditioner. Let's take it out of the. Uh, let's take it out of the uh, the chuck here. I want to show you a little close up of this thing. Okay, it's just a just a mandrel, you know. That's all it is. And what this thing does is that it generates heat as it spins and it transfers that heat to the folds or the pedals that are on the crimp of the shell. Okay. Now when you get shells, okay, that have um, that have been fired a few times, you're going to notice that they get crusty like this and they have a memory to them and they, they're kind of crackly. Now if you reload this it'll probably split okay because there's no more um, pliable you know material there and what this does is that it makes it pliable again so you can get a few more shots out of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate that. First of all no gloves. Anytime you use rotating machinery never use gloves. There's a lot of guys too that will take the hull Okay, and they'll just go ahead and stick it on there like that with their hands and they'll just use their hand you know to grasp it with and I'm going to tell you what if you ever had a hold of a rope and whatever on the end of the rope cut loose and it jerked the rope out of your hand you're going to end up with a rope burn that you have you know that that you know you wouldn't believe so you know that's that, that that's something that you you need to take in consideration working with friction here okay uh, one of the things too, as you can see, uh, these are a set of uh, Lee molds, and what I do is I use these handles as a cooling um, mold. See, once you heat up the, the pedals, they're pliable, so what you want to do is you want to throw it on top of one of these, and that will hold the end of it open, and then that way your, um, your crimp folds will... Um, will uh, form you know so anyway so let's get going on this first of all I want to look at the case make sure the case doesn't have any obvious cracks or splits or anything like that in it um, this also will reveal if it does because it expands the end of the uh, case a little bit so here we go I put it in the whole vise we got it ready to go we're gonna go ahead and turn it on this by the way is just a plain old central machinery Harbor Freight drill press I bought this Oh, man, I bought this thing years ago. I mean, I don't even think they make this particular model anymore. It's the five-speed benchtop model. Um, they've changed a few things on it, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, they. Th this is this is the older one. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've used this thing. I, I really honestly can't tell you. Yeah, I've used this thing over and over and over again. Just for, not just for this, and not just for, you know, gun stuff. But also, you know, projects that you have, like, you need to drill a hole in something very precisely or, you know, you need to, you know, modify something or, you, you know, you you know that sort of thing. You'll have to excuse my heater just kicked out. Um, it comes in handy. I mean, you may not need it all the time, but when you need one, it's nice to have one. So anyway, let's go ahead and get going here and quit the yapping. So, here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that down on there for a little bit and let that heat up. Okay, let that heat transfer, you know, to the top of the case. Okay, and while it's still warm, that's when you want to put it on. You know, you want to stick it on the end of your. Uh, mold handle here and that will cool and what that will do is that'll that'll hold that shape and as you're moving along here here we'll do another one
let me uh, do a little bit of field repair here. Yeah, the little stopper, you know, this is a M10 nut, just came off the bottom of this. And what that does is that stops the, the depth, and that's your depth setting. So anyway, we'll just keep moving along here. You just let it heat up really good. the end product. As you can see it's opened up the end of the case. I can also look to see if there's any splits or cracks or anything on the uh, mouth of the case and get that thing ready to reload. You know, it's, it, it, this, this process here doesn't take very long. It is, it is a process and, and it is an extra step. But the thing is, though, is that, you know, you get a few more firings out of your cases. You know, it doesn't take too long to do this. Like I said, you just let the heat do its job. And like, like I said, like these, these have been fired. I mean, you know, you can see right there, you know, they're, they're getting near the end of their life because, you know, of all the, all the burnt, you know, powder that's on them. Okay, we'll do this last one and wrap it up. Just wanted to go ahead and demonstrate the unit here. Like I said, just transfer that heat. That's all you got to do is make some pliable again. You'll find out that your uh, your crimps will turn out more uniform and you'll have less uh, fallout you know, in your reloading process. Now I suggest you know, getting a hole vise. The, the problem is, is that these hole vices from BPI stand back. I mean, it's they're expensive. Uh, there is a guy though who is engineering one for the Reloaders Network, by the way, and uh, he's seeing if he can make them in mass uh, and sell them for a, a a lot less than 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 the BPI product. Um, also, another thing too, when it comes to the, you know, when it comes to the the uh, conditioner itself, you can actually make one of these, you know, out of an old broom handle and then just turn it down to a cone shape. But you're going to have to center drill, you know, and make sure that you center drill it just right so that um, you can, you know, put a a, a nut. Um, you know, and a piece of all thread down through there, and use that. Um, you know, in in function of this, you don't have to go out and buy one of these. You can actually make one. In fact, if you have a drill press, it makes it real handy, because you know once you get the, you know once you get the uh, the piece on there that you want to work, you just chuck it up there. You know, and then you turn it down with a file. That's all you got to do, and then just sandpaper it. That's it. Um, another product that's available through BPI is what they call the skeever. Okay, now you can get skeeved and unskeeved hulls. Okay, um, and I'll show you something. Let's see if I can get one here. Okay, as you can see, these are brand new. These are brand new uh, Chedite or Chedite holes 
and uh, these are unskeeved. They're the same thickness at the top as they all the way down to the bottom. So what 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 skeeving your holes does is that it tapers, okay, the very top of the case. I'll show you how that's done. Another thing too, I never store the key of the chuck in the chuck. Some guys will just hang it in there like that, you know, so they don't lose it. That's a bad idea, man. All you got to do is hit that on button. This thing's going to go slinging around and it's going to go across the room at about 100 miles an hour. Bad idea. This brings up another thing too. When you use a drill press, put some safety glasses on. You know, I mean, it's just one little extra step, but then again, you only got one set of eyeballs. Another thing too, never use gloves. Never use gloves. Never use grow up gloves around rotating equipment, man. That's that's bad. So anyway, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and skeeve this. And I'll show you what that's all about. Okay, the whole sole purpose of the skeever, okay, I don't know if you guys can see it in there. However, it what it does is it puts a taper on the inside. And so when you go to do your fold crimps, uh, they just turn out so much better than having that, that, that thickness here at the end. So, you know, a whole skeever is kind of the way to go. You know, some guys choose to do it uh, as a step, you know, as they do, you know, for their, you know, for their own loads. And it turns out better than having, you know, having the factory bought ones that have already been skied. They choose to do this as an extra step. Um, like I said, you know, they want to, they want to do this themselves and that way they can control how much material they're they're removing there to improve their crimps but that's it you know that's the skeever right there so anyway uh this is thor's axe that's about all i got uh i'll tell you what watch the sales that's all i can say you know watch the sales at harbor freight you can get a 20% discount or a 30% discount. I know this goes for about 89 bucks, uh, the uh, drill press itself. Uh, but, you know, you can get these for $49 on sale. I mean, 50 bucks. Why go through life without one? You know, really. You know, if you have the room in your garage to have one, it's best just to have one. I mean, I've used it, phew, I've used it lots of times. You can even get a bigger setup if you want, but this this little tabletop model, you know, it does just fine for me. I don't need anything more than this. So anyway, hey, Thorzax, and I'll get this uploaded.